them, them, them. But it makes the, it draws you into the song. Now you're in it. It was two words said in like four bars. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's the whole point. And sometimes we do do that. We try to show off on. And, I, and when I'm saying this, I'm not saying it in a bad way. I'm saying you're excited. You know what I'm saying? You just got out of engineering school. You know, I know all this stuff, but it may not call for that. So really just do what the record calls for. Hey, cool. We actually got two more questions. I'm ready to ask one, sorry. So who's... Uh, hey, just, we got to get, get the front, too. We got to get the front. Okay. All right. Two-part compression question, actually. Mm -hmm. Get a little married for everybody. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, first, do you do um, sidechain compression on instrumentals to get the vocals to sit in the pocket a little better? Nah. I, I normally I normally EQ. When I EQ, I, I, I do subtractive EQing a lot, right? So when, I, when I'm EQing, I'm thinking about space the whole time. My, my bottom end and my high end is very easy to do for me. This is me personally, my opinion. Because I know how bottom end is supposed to sound in, in, in a record. I'll be quick about it. And I know how top end is supposed to sound. But the majority of instruments, vocals, keyboards, everything resides in the mid-range. Right? Or some form of that. So that's the battle area. And that's where you got to figure out who wins out. Right? No two atoms can occupy the same space at the same time. So through panning, through reverb, moving things around, I try to make space for the vocal. So if I do all that and I put the vocal in and the vocal's still not sitting enough on top, that means I gotta EQ something out of something else. Right? I that's my way of doing I do subtractive EQing. Now there are guys that do side chain compression, but what happens when that sample or whatever it is or whatever instrument dies out, then then what's feeding the compressor and the vocal's still going, it's being now it's not being fed that. You understand my reasoning why I don't do that? Like, I get the vocal the way that I want it, and then I'll move other frequencies out the way of the vocal if the vocal is the most important thing at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, just real quick, what, what are you setting your threshold at um, on, like, a compressor on verse? It's not, well, I can't tell you a decibel level because every vocal is different. Right. But what you try to do is, like, and if I had a chalkboard, I could show you, but say, you know, the whole thing is going to look like this and look like this, and then at one point it's going to look like that and look like this and look like this and look like this, right? As a wave. I'm letting the wave live, but the parts that are way above, I try to set the threshold so that it catches those. So right? what do you do, like maximum gain reduction, like, like 60 D or something? Nah, it just depends. It depends on what it is. No, it depends on what it is. If, if we're talking about a, a, a smooth Jay-Z vocal, I may have it on something that's like, I may have like a 3 to 1 ratio, and, and, and the meter may be just like, if I'm, now if we're in the meter where it's showing you gain reduction, it may be just doing this, like tapping this, right? But if somebody like um, Bleak, when Bleak rhyme, Bleak rhyme up and down, Free rhyme up and down. So Free compression is going to be stronger than what Jay's is. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But at no time, the, the, the point in which you feel like you're choking the artist's vocal is...